This is Gilbert Gottfried, and this is Gilbert Gottfried's amazing, colossal podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Frank Santo Padre, and we're once again recording at Nutmeg with our engineer, Frank Verderosa. Our guest this week is a dear old friend of Frank and mine, and a loyal friend and devoted listener of this podcast which will give you an idea of his priorities in life. He's a popular and much admired actor and singer who's appeared in everything from top-rated situation comedies like Murphy Brown, New Heart, and Sex in the City to prestigious TV dramas like Damages and The Good Wife to feature films such as Cinderella Man, The Long Kiss Goodnight, Scary Movie 4, and Larry David Sour Grapes, which was a piece of shit. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I thought thought that was... Wait, I didn't write that. (laughs) Yeah, it's right here. No, he's reading the entire... This was the original title. I got That was the original title. (laughs) Yeah, which was a total... Worthless piece of shit. Yeah, as the Sheridan piece was actually called that. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, to starring in lavish Broadway musicals. I didn't know you were gay. No, I'm not yeah. gay. I don't know what lavish and it's lavosh. I had, it, we were getting into the food, I thought. I love a lavosh. I love a lavosh. <laughs> like Guys and Dolls, the music man for which he was nominated for a Drama Desk Award and a Tony Award for Best Actor in a Musical. Now, I also read somewhere... (laughs) She's never going to get through the intro. Most people are embarrassed by the intro because it's it's not enough. Yeah. (laughs) He he just missed something. He he missed things that are like... (laughs) Important things. But it's okay. It's all right. Yeah, you can throw them in. I don't remember. Now, by miss, you probably... (laughs) Say, I miss the fact that you're proud of your Jewish heritage? No, I was no. Miss Proud of Jewish Heritage 1973. And then you took the title away from me, and I've never heard the end of that. It was Nancy Walker for four years. Or, it, was, it was Nancy Walker, we, and that's when we bonded. Uh, first Nancy Walker reference on the show. Is that right? Probably. Yes. All right, that's no. the but end. But it won't be the last. No. Yes. No. Over the course of a very busy career, He shared the screen and stage with dozens of popular and recognizable performers, including Will Ferrell, William Shatner, Glenn Close, Michael J. Fox, Candace Bergen, Christopher Guest, Betty White, Stephen Colbert, Bob Newhart, and Renee Zellweger, to name a few. His current series, the hit comedy, Unreal, launches its third season tonight, February 26th, on Lifetime. And we couldn't be happier that he's here with us now. Please welcome to the show a man of multiple talents and someone who wishes he was half as famous as I am. Wait a minute. (laughs) A guy who, according to legend, is proud of his Jewish parents. Oh, he added that one, too. It's yes. Not, <laughs> no. Craig Bierico. Thank you, Bierico. Bierico. <laughs> you got an seven syllable. Now you got an extra he syllable. Added seven <laughs> syllable. Bierico. Now I have even less time for one of my great flatulent showbiz stories because you had to put a ninth syllable in my name, which is already uncomfortable. It already sounds like a man falling down a staircase. <laughs> you had to give him an orthopedic limb. Uh, what back, didn't pal. you mention? You just didn't. There was something I did. Yes. It was Cinderella Man, and then there was something else. I tried to get all the things I in don't there remember. that you were proud I don't of. Remember. I didn't say company. I, was, I saw that show. That was oh, great. that was good. You were that good? Was a, that, that, uh, um, oh, I had a part in company that they put back in. from. They, they did the original like in 1968 or something, mm-hmm. whenever it premiered. Barbara and they, Barry. Barbara Barry was, was in that, and it was really Today's something, guest. and a, a you know a cutting edge because it all took place in a split second. A guy deciding whether or not he's going to go into his 
his surprise party. That's basically, it all takes place in his head. Literally, very uncomfortable for the actor playing the part. Just, that's how I know you're not listening. <laughs> that you go into, you go into a just, you, it's not enough to just face the person. <laughs> and I'm going to test you, it's going to come up every few, every, I'm going to do it every... <laughs> uh, but anyway, the, the, so when we did this production, we did this production. My part was it, it, it was the part of Peter, which was not which was largely cut out of the original production, because back then he made a pass. He made a homosexual pass at the lead character who was straight. Wow. Uh, but they wanted to explore that theme uh, and see what, you know, when it was the hip, you know, that kind of hip New York society. But they felt uh, it wasn't it. it it wasn't co- the audience wasn't comfortable with it yet, so they put it back in. And Sondheim was there. Mister Sondheim was was there. He wanted the scene back in. Paid me an enormously great compliment uh, uh, about it, which I'll carry around forever. Uh, and he and uh, but it was uh, it was the part that people said you're doing company. What part are you playing? And I wanted to see how small the role of Peter was. That instead of saying Peter, I'd say Glenn. I'm playing Glenn. And they'd go, uh, oh, oh, because there's no Glenn. Yeah. It's, uh, and uh, it was Peter, Peter barely existed. Yeah. <laughs> and he bar- and, and, and there's, there's a little bit more. So there's this great scene where he does, you know, they do that scene. Which, I saw been, you live. I must. It was. Did you, you go to the Philharmonic? Yes. And see it? it was you. Pa- well, Patty you don't McCombs. go to the Philharmonic. You don't do things like that. Gilbert. No. no. Gilbert I'm, I'm, why were you talking what about? To you? What would happen to you? I entered about tw- maybe 10 minutes ago. I spoke briefly with you and your wife. We reminisced <laughs> or as close as you get between blinks. You lose everything goes between blinks. That should be the movie for you. That's the project that I would not a, even a short term memory. It's a full night's sleep. And it's not even the Dana Carvey thing. It's every blink. And you don't know. <laughs> even it's half between a blinks. Yeah. Between <laughs> blinks. Like memoir name. But, uh, but uh, uh, oh, I don't remember. What yeah, you were good in it. I Thank think it was you. you, Neil Patrick Harris, well, and and, uh, and and Stephen Colbert, Colbert. who's doing his television show every day, thought he was going to walk out in a tux, sing a song, get a standing ovation, walk back out, and get back to work on his show, and found out no, we're gonna. They said no, we're doing the actual show, and he said I I looked at the opening number and got vertigo. Yeah, and I just thought, and he did it. He stayed and he did it and it was all memorized and we did a full production in yeah, two weeks. It was fun. And and he did it. And I thought, that's that's a worker. That's a fearless guy. He it, it actually reminded me of the story you told about, you know, it's you'll I hope you tell it again to make it an even 112 <laughs> uh, about you doing the doing the uh, aristocrat story. But he he was that like that kind of like I'm going to walk into fire. I'll probably burn to death. Here I go. When he did the thing with George Bush, remember, and he's he's got George Bush right there, and the, the, oh, the they thought he dinner. actually was like yeah. Bill O'Reilly. Nobody gotten the, the the nobody gotten quite that he was parodying them. Oh. I was on the train <laughs> with him and heard him talking to somebody. I guess his co-writer. I went to college with him. He was he was a long haired like. Mm-hmm. Turtleneck wearing hippie. He was a great guy. Uh, uh, All you need to know about that appearance at the Correspondence Center is they were so shell shocked that Rich Little was the was the MC the following year. God, <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> there was a correction. Oh God. Yeah. I, they may have thought he, the character was. Real. I think that's what yeah. I think that's what it was. Quite but possibly. he's. But I heard him on the train ride going down there. Then I he, I assume he was referring. He goes, "No, if we're going, let's do it all the way. I want to go all the way. Yeah. Let's do it all the way." Yeah. You know, I admire him. He's he's a great talent. Fearless. Yeah, and fearless. Like Gilbert. Like Gilbert. Gilbert you're yeah, also yeah, fearless. It is. I who I've yet to see live, which is hard to believe. Uh, I'm going to get the more laudatory uh, stuff just to make sure you're yes. awake during this. Yes. <laughs> Uh, don't <laughs> don't take anything for granted. <laughs> uh, the the movie I, I watched the movie uh-huh. up in Vancouver and uh, it really was just so stunningly beautiful. My condolences to you uh, on your sister, oh, on the loss of your sister, you. who I fell in love with. Her oh, whole family, I fell in love. A lovely with. person. And ha- and the the person and the locus of you with your family. The cha- I mean, you were still you, but the difference. It was like watching somebody morph into, like, into a, I don't know, somebody, like, morph out of you like it was this other creature. 
a, a lovable, quiet, shy uh, person. And I just and I just thought to myself, oh my god, he's you're the right director, the right you could do anything. There's so much. There's so much going on in there, and there's so much that's just quiet. And uh, because you, I mean, obviously you you, you, know, you enjoy that you enjoy your bombast, and we enjoy <laughs> we enjoy your bombast with you. You saw their potential but, in him as a performer by watching the. I, doc? No, I'm I'm I'm. That sounds belittling. I I mean I saw I I know Gilbert well enough to know. I mean I've seen your performances well enough to know that you're not like a you're not like a comedian who goes on and doesn't inhabit a character like in problem child, like you, you, you are that guy. Like, I believe you're that guy. There are other com- comics that come on and like, like Rodney Dangerfield and, and it's yeah. funny and Caddyshack, but he's literally doing stand up. Oh yeah. <laughs> Looking yes. right down the barrel of the camera. Go, would you, you could see somebody at the camera going, just don't look right into the camera. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? what did he say? Don't look into it. Like, what did you get with that? Had about the free bowl of soup. A like, lot of Bob Hope movies. were like, Oh, absolutely. <laughs> But I don't know if that if if you get what I'm like, I don't even know if that's somewhere you would want to go. But I saw I was like, oh, this is I see like Marty. I see Marty. Interesting. Yeah, wow. I really do. Interesting. If it was well, there was all kinds of stuff. I watched that move. It was a revelation because it wasn't anything I thought a hey, he probably wouldn't be interested. But uh, there was it was. The movie really took me by surprise, even though I thought I've been overprepared for this thing. Everybody says it's just so lovely and it's really, but it was, uh, it, first of all, it really hit me because it's everything I think everybody's looking for. And that thing you say at the beginning, uh, that you said it was so honest. And I know that feeling of like, I don't, I can't quite wrap my mind around it actually that it's actually happening i can't you mean fit. having a wife and children that i've had this life yes yeah. connecting to everything's fitting yeah and um, i don't think he's quite figured it out yeah yet. i i <laughs> compared it there and in real life like waking up in a twilight zone episode yeah 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 you also said at one point if your parents walked into the room uh, and, yeah and saw Everything. They d- saw the kids and saw yeah. the wife. If they, they come back to <laughs> yeah. life and then die immediately, die of a heart attack again. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and I also talk if I could introduce myself from a couple of years ago and said, okay, this is where I'm living now, and this is my life now. Would have been. Yeah, I th- I feel the same way, and maybe some maybe some of it is. Uh, I, some of it is, I mean, it was, it, I give a lot of credit to the filmmaker, Neil, name the filmmaker. Neil Berkeley he, yeah, deserves all the credit in the world. Oh, he, I, I, he did a beautiful job because I really do feel like I'm standing back and just, and I've been in your home and seen, and I just felt like I'm observing you and I'm not in the way, but, I, and it feels very natural. And, uh, I was just, just, it was beautiful. It was a piece of art, but it also felt like a true documentary, like the kind you don't yeah. see anymore. Yeah, it's also yeah. very, very funny to, oh, to see to see him in his environment. That's it, I, I I watched it and went, I can't believe I haven't seen Gilbert live. I haven't seen you live. Free tickets, but well, I'm I, I <laughs> yeah. thinking tomorrow night. What are you doing tomorrow is that night? Is a benefit. <laughs> Dara's benefit is tomorrow night. <laughs> and the movie's Gilbert. <laughs> and it's on Hulu. It is. I he's saw. Been, I watched it on Hulu. He's been trained yeah. to plug it every time it comes up. <laughs> <laughs> it is well worth your. Uh, uh, yeah, it's great. You know, it's well worth pirating. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I I own it. I own it. It's yep. in my holster. It's a go-to. Yeah. So, really. how about that, Gil? Yeah. The first thing he said to me on the phone. I saw Gilbert's movie. Wow. Yeah, I loved it. Wow. And I he, I just picked up the phone. He didn't even say hello. <laughs> I thought it was room service. And did he say it's on Hulu, Amazon? <laughs> and- he, he did. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth owning because there's all the extra things that you get. Yeah. You know, the visit. You promised the visit. Oh. Right? Yeah. You the stay over and the cooking of the dinner. Uh, <laughs> the drive, if, you pick, if you're drunk and you need a lift. <laughs> <laughs> It was lovely. It's so, it was just so lovely. I love, I, there's nothing I love more. And it is, it does go back to what Drew Friedman does, I think, a lot, which is to when you get shown 
something you're so familiar with or an aspect of someone that you're so familiar with, and then you see it from another angle, it's mind blowing. Like I drew a picture the other night, cause just because I thought I want to see what of the back from a view from the back of Lucy's apartment. You draw? Or, you draw? You yeah, do, you yeah, know, yeah. Do you? I, I should have bought it. I, I probably have it somewhere. You. I'll show you. Uh, you I, do you doodle or do you take it seriously and actually? I take try it to pretty seriously. Okay. Uh, but I mean, I'm like you. Didn't you like you? Because I saw some of your artwork and you were said, yeah, that was like 17 years ago. I don't do it anymore. That's what happens with artists: is you put the pen down and you realize I haven't picked the thing up for like yes. And then you hit middle age and you're like. I'm not blind, but I can't see anything that isn't 15 feet in front of me very clearly. And I, it's just you doing the glasses thing. But uh, I've started working with uh, like polymer clay and stuff. And uh, that's, I didn't know that uh, about you. And I, but I've always drawn. Well, that's what I was doing when everybody else was. We know, all did. Well, I went to, to I school. went to art school. I was an art student. Before, Where? If it's, I went to school of visual arts. Oh, my so dad. The, my dad was a painter, as you know, and an illustrator. And I did that for a long time. And, and Hitler, and also Hitler was a yeah, painter. Both of us. He was. Yeah. In, <laughs> I happen to think my he was like, I think he got fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I think he got fucked over. <laughs> and, uh, but the good news, the good news is, uh, he took it well. He took it. He took it, and you roll with those punches, right? <laughs> it's it's not like a, what are you going to go, go flame a hole? I forgot you were Race. in the house and you saw his artwork because he has it hanging. Because people yeah, don't know this I about you, that, yeah. that your doodles are on the wall in your house, but you haven't done it in a long time. Yeah. You have the time. Yeah. When I was a kid and a teenager, I used to draw like crazy. And also. Was, was it an escape for you? or was I it, guess so. And maybe you don't need that hatch I anymore. guess there was all that craziness spinning around. Yeah, it's going to come out somehow. And if it would, you would have been doing, I, I would have been a cartoonist or this. There was no way I was going to be sitting behind a desk going, let me tell you about this plan. Like, I was never going to be that. that. I didn't know you were that big a fan of cartooning. I know you're a fan of Drew's. I know that that's how. Oh, I That's began, he was us. the first guy that I ever, and then I learned it's actually good to, to copy and emulate, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, that's how you learn. But I, but I literally used to just do the Jew dots I and guess. I would just go, Jesus, <laughs> God, it's 500 o'clock in the morning and this isn't even that great. But I had, uh, I think I, the one that I had that was supposed to be, and I did the dots all wrong. Like it didn't look like a photograph. It just looked like somebody dots. Yeah, just like <laughs> it just looked like somebody got. Yeah, somebody looked like a lot of flies died it, on it my picture. It looked like you took a drink of ink <laughs> and then sneezed. sneezed. Yeah, you did a spit take. And not even that would have yeah. been Ralph Steadman. It was like he was. It was uh, no. It was Macbeth, and then it was as as gothic as I could make it. And then Dagwood Bumston was just this is Dagwood I see before me. Not funny. Yeah. Right. And uh, and it was all because I'd met a guy named John Weidman who used to write for the oh, Lampoon. John Weidman, and yeah. he came to our college. He goes, "You draw. You should be. You should be work for the Lampoon. You'd be making dozens of dollars now." Didn't John Weidman end up writing Assassins with Sondheim? Yes. Wow, big yeah, very yeah, very big talent. smart, interesting guy. And at that point, he had, they'd written uh, a musical about Al Capone called uh, 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 oh, I can't, but America's Sweetheart, uh, which was fascinating, big exactly. talent. Oh John my John God, Weidman. yeah, I remember yeah, read him in the Lampoon. Your stuff always reminded me a little bit of Basil Wolverton, Gilbert. You know that artist? No. Take no. a look, because your stuff is is eerily similar. And I don't obviously yeah. since who you don't that? know his, yeah. for the, was, uh, a, for the I of course know who he is, but for the idiots at home who don't, he was an I, what'd you call him an underground cartoonist? He was one of those oh. guys around the, dead? the ton. He's dead now. I yeah. know some other yeah. people compared it to Crumb. Yeah, Crumb. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. That that's, that's like a it, line out of De Niro. Did you? Did little you? Bit, little bit. Little bit. <laughs> little bit. Little bit. Little bit. So pray. Oh, the comedian. Have you seen the comedian? Oh, oh I, he's in it. Not only. Yeah. <laughs> I'm oh, in that's it. right. He's I, in it. Yeah, I'm in it as like uh, like a, a weirdly kind of recognizable yeah. extra. With, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you go. It's the first time you see him. The agent comes in, right, out of the rain or something like that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm there on the the dais hey. when he's that movie. Oh boy, <laughs> it, he's for some time he's been uh, just circling the edges of like to be a comedy sensation. Yeah, I think I'm a comic. I think I'm a comic sensation. Yeah, it's and it's weird because he on the Rickles tribute he did like a yeah. I got a tight ten. Yeah. yeah. 
And I was like, uh, it was really odd. It was very odd. And yet very he strange. can be funny with the right material. I'm sure we, he's. As, I'm sure off know. the cuff, he's funny. Yeah, he is you funny know? off the cuff. Uh, but that and, was but that was hilarious, uh, hilarious. Miss, but the the well, I didn't see the whole movie. I saw you, but I I didn't know where the the movie literally wandered out of my apartment. If it's, you see him in Brazil, if you see King yeah. of Comedy, Midnight Run, he can do Just, comedy. I want to say very clearly, <laughs> one of my favorite actors. Yeah. in the entire world. But there's also something. I don't think he's a funny guy personally. <laughs> no. Well, when you see tax, when I when you see him, when you yeah. see the pure grain young taxi driver. Yeah. I'm not gonna get too close to this guy. No. I'm not gonna to worry. He can stand five people in front of me, craft service always. I'll never go near this guy. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, there was something, and uh, he's. Uh, there's something that comes with youth that uh, just uh, you, you probably have to really fight to hold on to. Cause he's he's become now he's a corporation. He's, yeah. he's an entity. Yeah, and, and, yeah, um, yeah. Really is. it it used to be like magic when you'd watch him years. He ago. disappeared. Yeah. Yes, he disappeared I mean, into the role. Taxi driver, uh, raging bull. I mean, it but was what is magical. that? See, he was in, He was. He had learned, uh, or had. Un, he had learned to be. Di- he had learned his part well enough to disappear and just live this guy's life, and was fearless. Yeah, and that was what I was talking about. Whether or not you do that, and it would still require. I I still think a, a, an actor needs a, a, a director and, and and all that kind of stuff. But if you can go to those, he could still go to those places. You just gotta want to go there, you know. And after a while, you learn tricks, and you go. I'm in my, you know, I'm in my 70s. This is going to upset my back if I sit like this and do it the way that I would have done it when I was in my 20s. Which he, was, he even disappeared into into roles that he wasn't, you know, you you think of him as LaMotta. You think of him as Travis Bickle. Yeah. But like playing, playing, a, playing a priest in True Confessions. Yes. He would disappear. Or, or like. You forget his, you were watching Robert haunted, De Niro. Somebody said he, his face was haunted. And yeah. I, thought, I thought that was a beautiful way of and it. Like Just forget a, you were watching an actor immediately. A, a southern ball player and bang the drum slowly. Yeah. 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 Like not at all something you'd The deer hunter. Just yeah. a canvas, a canvas. Somebody said to me a true movie star is 75% complete as a human being. There's. There's 25% of them that just net that is just empty. It's for pocket change in real life. And uh, it's there to be filled. And for the pe- they get on screen and people project the rest of the person onto them. And that was a fascinating idea. I don't know if it's true or not, but that like interesting people aren't great movie stars. No, that's interesting. Tell me, we talked on the phone about directors that you had worked with and you were making some very interesting points that uh, of, uh, with Ron Howard, you were talking about um, Larry David. We had David Zucker oh, here yeah. who you he, worked with. Yes, he David wrote Zucker. that piece of shit you were in <laughs> amazing <laughs> uh it is kind of amazing up until recently i thought i'm in the only piece of shit that larry david ever made but the truth is uh he was you know what else was there uh, uh, well, fridays he, listen, listen fridays was not exactly you know the golden era of television he, and and he wrote norman's corner he wrote a show for a gilbert pilot for me. For the old Cinemax comedy experiment. Oh, I'd like to see that. Is it terrible? It, it oh, was, it's around. It was so bad when they were trying to sell Seinfeld to a network. Uh, they said, okay, Seinfeld's a star, and who's going to be writing it? And they said, Larry David. And one of the execs said, isn't he the one that wrote that piece of shit for Gilbert Gottfried? <laughs> I'm just so happy to hear it wasn't Craig Bierko. <laughs> Or Craig B R R R R R R R R like you would say. Extra syllable. Yeah. 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 Not even Arco. Arco. Craig in my My levels just blew. Do you have a copy of Norman's Corner? It I'd came like out on VHS. It. I'm sure I do. <laughs> you show me that and I'll show you my first movie, which was a Christian film. Okay. Oh. A witnessing Hit us. film uh, called uh, Love Note. Uh, it was a Christian move. I was at Northwestern University and my lovely first girlfriend, who's a brilliant Steppenwolf actress named Sally Murphy, got the lead in this movie and I was hanging out and I said, could I try out for the boyfriend? Who's now, you know what a witnessing film is? Like they show them at the church I know what they and are. you're supposed to be so moved that you go, 
Well, I gotta go with Christ. Oh, like, yes, you know, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like roller coaster, like roller coaster for us, right? Uh, is, that and, a, you know, is that a reference to the George, the George Siegel sure. movie that was in Sense Around? Sure. Okay. I don't know why that jumped into my mind. And <laughs> Helen Hunt, <laughs> and a young Helen yes. Hunt said Richard Widmark. Yep. Uh, Bless you. Oh, the intrepid, the intrepid George Siegel is the oh. the, the ro- solving the roller coaster <laughs> mystery. Uh, they're killing people on roller coasters. Why don't you turn the machines off? No, that's what they want us to do. Oh, I don't remember uh, a young Helen Hunt in it, but I do. A young Helen Hunt. Paid to see that one in what, the movies. Was it kind of like uh, Davy and Goliath? Uh, you got to remind me again. Oh, what we that were... was those animated. He's saying the religious film. That oh, you did. no, was no, like no, it or... wasn't like that. And yeah. also the really good uh, Sunday morning shows like uh, uh, Lamp, Lamp Unto My Feet Lamp or whatever it was. With, my feet. Was that the dramas with, that with yes. Martin Sheen used and to be? Sun... And he used to go, I know this is religious. He's supposed to be Christ, but I'm enjoying this show and I'm 10. Sunday semester. That was what it was. was another one. Such a good actor that he, he made me watch. It was like little... Uh, spiritual twilight zones they were odd yeah but uh, interesting uh, uh, but it, but oh. uh, no this was a uh, it was a witnessing film and i was hired to play uh the guy the christian if you look out your window frank verderosa just put out the entire <laughs> cast of oh, davy and goliath can i tell you something frank, and I, frank it's, has it's, them in a box seriousness i am so confused by my erection right now <laughs> That I don't know don't how be. to express it. Don't be. Can I? It's the mom. Can I have Embrace my it. Dara? Uh, am I pronouncing that right? Can I have the? <laughs> no, 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 not that. It's there's that. It's that's my coffee, my bulletproof coffee. Have you had try? Have you tried the bulletproof no. coffee? Uh, thanks for no. bringing the dog, by the way. Oh, you classed boo. up the boo place. Is, boo, boo is here. Excellent. Beautiful dog. People love Boo. Thank you. Thank you, Dara. Uh, you can smell. There's no liquor. Yeah, sure. There's Frank, nothing. you just happen to have the Davy and Goliath figures lying around. I forget who gave that to me, but yes, I love I do. it. Oh, because I love those it. would always be like Davy uh, would get lost in a park or a county fair, and he'd be with his dog Goliath. And then <laughs> they find who's, out. It was a little too big for the family, yeah. actually. A little oh, menacing. Yes. And they'd find out at the end. You know, it would be like, well, you were lost, but God always knew where you were. <laughs> does, God, does God also have no features? <laughs> because I looked exactly like mom if mom was shorter and had my shirt on. Why are sister's arms longer than her legs? So that was your in- introduction to show business? Yeah, well, yeah, film. it was actually, and I, I really tried as hard as I could, and I, and, uh, and, um, uh, we were up for a Dove Award. Sally won hers. I uh, a Dove Award. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> it was, it was very strange. We went, yeah, we did it in the belt buckle, <laughs> Warsaw, Indiana, and they put us in separate homes on the separate side of town. Oh, it was, oh, it was so strange. Uh, but it's, it's out there. And if if you show me uh, Norman's uh, asshole, what's the Norman's, <laughs> Norman's <corner>? asshole? <laughs> Yeah, that well, was the original title. Right there. Norman's yeah. asshole. I wonder it didn't fly. Yeah, it was. You know, somebody <laughs> at was NBC a... was like, I thought Norman's, I didn't like Norman's asshole. I liked Seinfeld. <laughs> Whoever that guy was. Who was the guy? They all, all the all the guys at NBC who worked in the office and took credit for Seinfeld were like, the, who was that guy who ran in? I don't oh, remember. Anybody. Littlefield Yes, yes, yes. And, and they're the, all like, or, I'll tell you. And he's now he's like lecturing and running. And we heard Seinfeld. And I, you know what it was? It was an anomaly. It was an, and they, all they did was want to kill that show. Oh, yeah. yeah. They would get me to go, somebody's got to say, I love you at some point. And he said, no one will ever say, I love you on my show. And that's a deal breaker. And they're like, okay. They wanted to ruin the show. George Shapiro was here with us a couple of weeks ago. Did there he was, say there that? was one executive, a guy named Rick Ludwin. Who took a, a who took a shine to the show and kind of and to got the, it? He, he got it and he went for bat. He went to bat for it. And he was the guy. And everyone who tries to stop a show or stop someone's career and then sees it's a <clears> success <throat> later on, or that person becomes a star, they're always like make them out to be the lone person in the company. What like, is that? I fought everybody on and that. And it's the exact- <laughs> yeah. Opposite. You did fight everybody, but for the wrong reason, and yeah. you were a Viking. Why are you claiming to be? Well, that's the way he was with the podcast. He bailed early, and now he wants to take credit for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, after the first uh, one, I he was missing up. out on all that head. money. Yeah. I wanted to get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Didn't he? He was gone, man. Didn't did he tell you that I, that I said this is the next natural step? I mean, do this as long as you want, but it's because it's a joy. But it's I, we put this on TV for crying out loud. Oh, and get it because I here, miss buddy. Clubhouse television. Like what Cl- what Conan was at the beginning, where you just felt like I think I'm. It's it's not UHF, but it's close. And I'm the you know, and the audiences were smaller, and you kind of felt like you were watching. It felt like late night. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh were, yes, you know, yes. And now every and now, like the late late show is as big and loud as. What did you the tell me? Show. This show should be on at four thirty in the morning. No, this oh. was an idea that Stephen Weber okay. had and pitched to me. Oh, and I actually a, thought a good was idea. I thought it was a. A, a really brilliant idea, but uh, Stephen Weber is another one who says something, and by the end of the sentence, he's in, deep in a conversation with somebody and else. I, <laughs> and uh, he's his ADD, ro- his Steven. ADD has beaten my ADD. We got him like here. A, in yeah, that chair. I know. He, he, he says he's he goes. I have a great idea, and I go. I look forward to listening to eighteen point three seconds of it before you call somebody else and you're and married. You and know? Jack Parr, uh, his. <laughs> <laughs> There's some no, ADD for you. Because you you mentioned <laughs> Jay Silverheels. Yeah, no, Jack <laughs> Parr. It's going back to what you were saying yeah. about a, a late night yes. show. Yes, Jack Parr. Said, you know, he always whispered like it's all of his talking was like. That. We don't wake anybody up. And and he all of his guests. It was all very quiet. And That's interesting. Talking. I thought about that. And Jack Parr wanted it to be like that because he heard. said. People are like it's the end of the day. You're lying in your bed. You want to relax. Yeah, and and they didn't want any loud voices or or loud bands. It was all. I think that's actually it's certain. Well, listen, we're I fall asleep with the with the telephone on my face. Yeah, you know. Uh, So I I'm the last one to I'm the last one to talk. But I I, it it when it was just television. Yeah, I, I used to thought, oh, the way they programmed it, then they just kind of lull you to, lull you to sleep, and then, and and I just thought, oh, but what I miss was, uh, it, it just doesn't feel like pri- It feels the late late show, or I'm not blaming any of these any particular show. It's just they all seem as big and loud as yes. the one that precedes yeah. it. And there's yeah. no, yeah. nobody ever shuts up. Yeah. The Ben blast really yeah. loud. It's and- like it's happening at five o'clock in the afternoon. Yes, and it should be. Late. It's for later. It's it should be a one guy with a harmonica, and you know, <laughs> like the Joe Franklin show. Yes. <laughs> so but I think well, yeah, I actually. think audiences yeah. now wouldn't be able to accept a quiet. Yeah, it's a different. Show. Yeah. It's a different yeah. world. Yeah. Well, they, well, look. Did you th- listen when you were at the pizza store? Yes. Yeah, Say yes. Listen. Yes. Uh, when he listens to the show, store, Gil. When you were at the pizza store, did you think anybody would ever listen to this? And here you are, eighteen years later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it. So, uh, you know? We've you, been running longer than uh, I mesh. Say, I just say, it's <laughs> <that's> <laughs> so funny. You think this show has the, the, the qualities of a late night show, and, and you could see it on television? Absolutely. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, we'll because go, what you, first we'll take of all, some meetings, the, the thing that you don't have, the thing that you, that you have that that is impossible to capture is the chemistry between you guys, which is, that's impossible. It's impossible. Oh, that was why it was so great when, when uh, Conan came back and he brought Richter back and I was like, yes, it's better. Even yes. better. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He, he's so smart. I mean, I don't know what the, Richter wanted to leave because Richter wanted, you know, he wanted, he, he wanted to act. And he, he was going to be a star. Got a yeah. pilot, got a series. Yes. Which yep. it was actually really funny. I thought, um, Andy I, Richter controls the universe. That's right. Yeah. And then, uh, and I love that he's back. Uh, he's really, really, he's very good They're at good what he together. does. Yeah, and, and I think that's what you guys have. I would love to see it on TV, I, but that's a private thing. <laughs> the, the, what, what I was talking about with Weber was he said, hey, I had an idea. Uh, you know that nether world of television between like 2.30 and like 5.30 where there's just – who knows what the – I mean yeah. it's still like just – you know. even on networks they're still showing like you know uh, what are those infomercials and stuff. Take the, take that time and tell the network, give us a minimal amount of money. Just give us a, five cameramen and those stupid, like the early SCTV sets, like the flats, you know, a couple pairs of sandals, a wig and a lady, you know, and let us, and then let us go out and find writers. And 
because it's the age of the DVR. Nobody has to be watching it live. Let us fill those hours with something and let people fill their DVRs with it. And it will be a sort of visual podcast area. You'll pay no money. And every fifth show will be great or whatever. With the same format that we have here? I don't know. Well, no, it wasn't. I was I wasn't connecting the two okay. for that. I think you guys deserve a bona fide, you know, you know, an hour when people would actually be. That's very uh, awake. nice. We're gonna but, we're gonna uh, continue. But to try it would that would be an interesting thing too. Is why not? It is. It, it people tape things and watch things in the strangest ways. Nobody knows what's going on, and anybody can predict tells you they can predict how this is all going to play out is lying or they're crazy. Uh, is why not and during those hours? Televise it during those hours for the five people who are up, you know. And then uh, I'm, I'm sure your fans, a lot of them are up, right? Oh, yeah. And then <laughs> we hear from them in the middle of the night <laughs> reloading. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, it's just always seemed like it's dead air time, but there should never be dead air time. And especially with a recording device. Listen, I would run the network so differently. Even with even knowing what the Marx Brothers did, that, that they used to take a play, tour the country, and that's how they wrote their movies. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. why they were so fucking sure. funny before MGM yes. because they knew where the laughs were. They knew it backwards and forwards, and they did it with certainty. And then MGM didn't want to do that anymore. Yeah, no, I, the they last were, one they did. yeah they were funny with Paramount. Yeah. yeah. That was their early. Because they toured for, you I think know, Day at the Races was the last time that they, they took something out. Take a sitcom, take four episodes, take your, your actors, to go to Chicago, go someplace where it's not going to make any, you know, and tour the sitcom and make it great, learn where the laughter is, and come back with cheers rather than, you know, Johnny chases a bus. It's a great idea. Johnny chases a bus. You and yes. Weber are visionaries. Well, we're flattered that you listen to the show I love as the show. often as you do. I, I love and thanks show. for tweeting about it and putting the word out the way you do on uh, social doesn't media. Doesn't it? Does nobody else do that? No, of guests, you mean? A lot of our guests don't have a computer. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. They don't have true. a phone or They're like. I don't have a right. I have room for that giant reel to reel. Yeah, you gotta have a lady with a beehive haircut to, to run it. <laughs> the stencil. You yeah. have a machine that heats up food? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds crazy. <laughs> we do appreciate it, Greg. We appreciate it. I love the show, and I love you guys. The, well, the other one who promotes us a lot is Richard Kind. Richard Kind has been Richard a godsend Kine. to the show. I tell you something about <laughs> First of all, a lot of you might be surprised to see me in a movie about guilt, but, but it's the law. I'm in every movie. I mean... <laughs> I'm being edited into Bobby Gott's Lumbago <laughs> currently. This is a truth. This is the truth. I'm a friend of George Clooney. I just thought it. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. But the thing about Gilbert, oh, he is an angel and he's the devil. <laughs> and I only hope that Kara, it's Dara. <laughs> Let me try it again. I'll have a little fun with it. Keep rolling. I'll have a little more fun with it. I hope Dara saved his life. That's Dara saved his life. He said, I have watched that over and over again. And I have a cut. I have a cut. I have a cut. I'll put it up. I have a preview of your movie. It has the boom, 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 boom. Oh, yeah. You never show up. And he goes, boom, 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 boom. Now, one of the greatest, craziest, you know, and it's got the Letterman introduction. to This guy, is he's not just crazy. This guy's crazy. And it just cuts to Richard going, he's got the devil. And he's got an angel. And I think Dara saved his life. Richard Kind in Gilbert. I'll send it to you. Because there's nothing more fun. Oh, Lord. It's just, is... it's two shooting fish. It's shooting Richard Kind in a barrel, which how fun would that be? But <laughs> this, this is the first Richard Kind oh, imitation I've ever heard. It's flawless. It's pretty good. I do, I do a pretty good Richard Kind. Oh but every, I God. can't imitate anybody else. But Richard, Richard, yes, he's. Uh, I tell you, I want to tell you something. I saw the show last night, <laughs> and I say this because I've. I say this because I've seen you be great. You were terrible. It was terrible. I played Harold Hill. He told me in his underwear, <laughs> which, if you've never seen, treat yourself to that. I played Harold Hill. I was terrible, but I was a lot of fun to watch. 
I don't know. Still don't know what that means. <laughs> when he was in here, I tried to get him to sing something from the music, man. He wouldn't touch it. Well, you got to, trouble, my friend. Right here, I can't up. Uh, actually, we were doing Guys and Dolls, and um, uh, you know, you think Guys and Dolls, that's bulletproof. You and Oliver Platt. Yeah, yeah. Bullet, bulletproof. Bulletproof. And uh, my niece was doing the show in high school at the same time, and their run was longer. <laughs> I was like, how do you do it week after week? She's yeah. like, I don't know. Like, I guess we're, Because you know, uh, uh, we, clo- we, it was just so bad. And it was really, because it's Lower East Side Jew. And we had this Canadian Canuck. It was the least, uh, it was just, it was so awful. Uh, and um, uh, at, at any rate, uh, it, but I think, I think Oliver Platt um, uh, di- I di- lacked the director to tell him, you know, the guys who, what you need, to, uh, Oliver Platt did say, you you're, you know this, the, what, what should I be, I, and I knew what to say, and I didn't have the guts to say, which was, go watch all the Bill Go You Can, and watch all, of, because the same guys wrote this. Yeah, the, 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 the same writers. That, that, that Damon That's Runyon. The, it was the same writers, and you listen, to listen to those guys and dolls, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but you can't stop listening to it. It's perfect that it's and it's a, like a Bilko episode, but mm-hmm. it's spiritual. It's all about it, it's beautiful, and the music is flawless. It's just it's a it's a real masterpiece. So and he was he he was just kind of playing it uh, very quiet because he's a very good actor, and he was searching, and he didn't have a director to say no 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 because they wanted to play the two leads wanted to play uh, Nathan and uh, uh, what's your, Ad, Ad, Nathan and Adelaide, Adelaide as kind of Bonnie and Clyde, kind of in on it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, no, no, you see, no, first of all, Nathan and Adelaide are functionally retarded. They shouldn't, there's no reason that they should have lived this long. That's how stupid they are. They, they're not, they're, these aren't smart people. They're morons, you know, and uh, when they get in trouble, they're surrounded by all of these characters. They're beloved. And, uh, love wins the day and all that. But no, they're not. They're not Bonnie and Clyde. They're not shrewd. It's the wrong you know? approach. Yes, and so uh, there was there were misfires all over. Plus, the staging was we had move we had animations like so. You know, there's a scene where Sky Masterson takes this girl down to Havana. So all you need is an offstage kind of. You know, you need Charlie Callis. Oh yeah, <laughs> Charlie Callis. We had a screen <laughs> with an animation, like a ten thousand dollar plane that flew over the audience and scared the shit out of everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah, it did, was just ridiculous. Did you? And did, <laughs> you know, it's funny because you mentioned Bilko, oh, and man. I think there's a case of oh. also a show that was really well prepared because. I think I was talking to Richard Belzer. He saw like a really early episode and he said it didn't change. Yeah. From that very, you know, when you watch early episodes of sitcoms, all the characters are different. And yeah, so they don't have their mojo yet. Yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't, they would never say that. They would never well, dress also like the, that. Well, also, the, everybody's coming from the theater in the early television. The writers and the actors are coming from the theater. So there's still, so, and he's, and his character's a state. He's already this guy. He knows. Oh, yes. He's already, yes. he's already there. And all of everybody's cast and they've, you know, we're, now it's the generation after the generation of people who did theater. They've, they grew up on television and nobody's been in front of a live audience. I remember watching early episodes of Cheers. I'm a huge Ted. I think he was one of the great leading light comedian he is. Uh, yes. men he, of, he of is. All, all television And history. good in dramatic roles. Yes, he's just yes, he damn is. great. And uh, and and uh, I had an occasion to talk to him and I just said, uh, where did that come? I know that the first time I ever did a sitcom, I gra- I noticed I was wa- I had made a decision to carry a small soda bottle because you did it on Cheers and you kind of used it and you used it to drink so I'd always have something to do oh. and I'd have like a little uh George Burns thing to butt a joke piece of and he goes he goes I did that with Dick Van Dyke the first few years on Cheers I'm just I'm not doing Dick Van Dyke but I'm I mean I'm stealing and I'm just I'm scared out of everybody's got I think everybody that's with the drawing, with the dots, with everybody. Everybody's stealing from everybody. Uh-huh. I look at Nathan Lane. I think he's a tremendous comic actor, but I look at him and I see the history of American comedy. I'm glad you said that. When I went to see the producers, I may have told you this yeah. before. I saw every, I saw every comic actor in that performance. Yeah. He was doing Burt Lar. He was doing Ed Wynn. He was doing Zero. He was doing Gleason. Yes. 
he was just. He was he's he pulled at, yeah. at masterfully. The, yes, it was like the, it was like going to the Comedy Hall of Fame, and and, and doing and, and going in and out. And the thing that, that that sets him apart from somebody who's just like a great like there's a guy who does Gleason. I can't remember his name, but he did the best Gleason ever. Uh, uh, is and I don't know. Maybe he turned into a great actor. Is that Nathan's a great actor? Yeah. And if you don't inhabit like Gleason inhabited, he Gleason also did The Hustler, and there you don't even think of Ralph Cramden. No, I don't think he crossed my mind when I saw him in The Hustler, which is amazing because you'd think somebody in The Hustler would go, you know, you look like Ralph Cramden. I mean, I'm just saying. Or Soldier in the Ring. Yeah. Yeah. She's also great. That's at. great acting. Right? Yeah. It's, I mean, I mean, and he had, tr- he was something. It's funny you said that about Nathan Lane. Yeah. You really, it's just, you just, it's, he's got, he's you got could soul. see what a fan of show business he is, what, how knowledgeable he is. But that, he'll also that every, go, every he, one of those people. But everything his starts from uh, the truth. You know, I, I did Music Man. I, I opened my mouth and, and it sounded like it sounded. But I had been listening to Robert Preston all my life. I'm not going to change the choices. But if you don't inhabit the role, then you're just, you're at Disneyland in the Hall of Presidents. You know, you're just, you, you have to connect with the other person. You have to put it out on the line. And, um, uh, it's still acting. That's why I look at Nathan Lane and I, Luke I Costello, love Luke Costello too. That was the one I forgot. Oh, oh that's, yeah, that's, you could name it. everybody. They're all in his performance. I don't. I think he's, it's almost like Robin Williams is. He probably can't help but absorb what's great. Yeah, it's and, an homage. It's an homage to all of them in, yes. a, in a way. He's it's throwing funny. them at you. I always watched like when the Adams Family was on. I always watched John Aston and said. He's just Groucho Marx. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, well, and so was early Hawkeye Pierce. Yeah, oh, that's oh my right. God. Absolutely. Absolutely. And he'll and he'll tell you that. Yeah, steal from the best. The nicest man and, I ever met, Alan Alda. Alan Alda. Mine he too. was like, Me one too. of the one. Well, uh, there's so many of them, but he's he was one of the few celebrities. He's who you meet, and they they turn out to be who you want them to be. And he had come to see Guys and Dolls, and he came backstage, and I was drawing all over my walls. I drew, so I had all these characters from the fifties. As like in the dice game, I had Ralph Cram, and I had Norton, and I great. had you know, and he came and he saw it. And he told me all about his watching. Oh, his father I just, did it the just show. hit me. His father was the original Sky. Was Masterson. the original Sky Masterson, and I thought he's being very nice and deferential. And he came a week later. He came to see the show again. Only this is what had happened. So it's Alan Alda. Uh, you know, I I actually told him. I said you should walk around with a cup, and actors should give you a dollar because everybody's stolen from you. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, I have nothing on me, but uh, because I'm doing Broadway, but if, but uh, I would, you know, but uh, really, and he, he couldn't have been nice. He came back with his wife, Arlene, and he goes, I wanted to show her the room, you know, with that smile. Oh, yes. yes. And he comes yes. and he shows her the room and I'm in a panic, like a Jap, a Jack Tripper. Oh shit. I gotta oh, yes. get him out yeah. of here <laughs> yes. because I had invited Peter Tork to oh. see the show. <laughs> What, and Peter because Tork I always thought when without... I did the music, man, I wish I had invited. Why not invite Paul McCartney, who sang "Told It Was You"? Why not invite Mike Nesbitt? Why, why not? To the pe- what do you think? How do you think people get ahead? Like, or just get to meet people? Yeah, like, smart. I've met so many people backstage. Why not just? And so I said, if it ever happens, if I get, I'm lucky enough to do a show. And I had read that Peter Tork at that point was suffering from throat cancer. And I, I didn't know how to get in touch with him, but I went online. I found his manager. I said, if it would give him any comfort, I understand he's going through a challenging time. If it would give him any comfort, he wants to see the show. I would love to have it. And he shows up, calls me from outside the theater. This was pre the monkeys, like third explosion. Yeah. You know, it was right before that. So he, 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 he called me, he goes, can you let, tell them to let me in, please? Because they're not letting me in. Oh, yeah. Can you believe that? So he gets in. I remember we had a particularly quiet show that night. Uh, it was, you know, once we got our bad reviews, audiences take their orders and they go, we're watching a bad show. But the previews, they were dying. But as soon as the bad reviews come out, they just they st- it stops like that. And I just thought, oh, this is too bad. I'll just pretend it's a good show. But Peter Tork is out there in the silence somewhere. So Peter Tork walks in. I've never met him, but I have this thing for the for the monkeys. And uh, he walks up the stairs and I put my arms around him. And I remember thinking I wanted it to feel like my older brother, but I'm feeling like my dad. You know, I'm feeling a 70 year old guy. I'm a mortal. And then behind him, I hear, hey, I just wanted to show Arlene. And I was like, 
get out of here. I'm with Peter Tork. Oh, wow. And he introduces himself. He goes, hi, I'm Alan Alda. He goes, I'm Peter Tork. I used to be in show business. And, uh, you know, making light of himself. He goes, but he didn't know who he was. And, uh, uh, and it was such a strange moment. But I was I was thrilled that Alan Alda came back. <laughs> I was thrilled to hear what the stories story. of Alan Alda talking about these Lower East Side Jewish comics doing these lines. And he, he repeated one of them for me. It, which was, there was a, a, I won't get the line right. Steve Rosen, an actor, did it so great in the show. It was um, when they lose the crap game to Sky and now they've got to all go to the mission. Have you seen the play? Oh, yes, yes. They all got to show the mission and one of them, Big Jolie, I think, stands up and goes, uh, or not one of the guys, uh, Benny Soustry stands up and goes, uh, listen, I just want to say uh, when the uh, first Sky challenged us to, uh, to a crap game uh, uh, against our souls, and if we lost, we'd have to show here. Uh, I thought if we lose, uh, I wouldn't want to be here. But uh, now that I'm here, I still wish I wasn't here. <laughs> like, that's how Alan Alda did it. And he said the whole show was like that. It was yeah. Yiddish theater. Like, wow. Still wish I wasn't here. That's great. <laughs> wow. And he just said it was people were literally rolling in the aisles, tearing the carpet out. And uh, he was very nice about our show. I think it was serviceable. But it was that's uh, tough. You're playing his dad's uh, one of his dad's signature. He roles. couldn't have been nicer. And yeah. you know, it, there's not. It's not a. It's yeah. It's a. It's the Peter Lawford role. Yeah. It's like. So, yeah. It's like. Uh, yeah. yeah. You just got to be as smooth and wear a suit. And he's basically. the most down to earth person. He's actually so he's and he's, smart. he's he's almost embarrassed about his celebrity because he's now he's into science and he's such a well he's, he's really such those, an intellectual he's one of those people who uh, like we were talking the other night like um, uh, Steve Martin who yeah. has who I when I read his biography I had no idea like he he wasn't that funny that he didn't grow up that that and uh, I he actually said. I would. I have no talent whatsoever. I worked really hard. Someone literally, when uh, you know, I started doing little things here and there. Just I started working at Disneyland. I got I got infatuated with this banjo player and the way he would toss off jokes. And bit by bit, I got drawn into show business. And when I got a job on um, uh, the Smothers Brothers show, uh, the head writer yeah. uh, actually said. You put the punchline here, and now you. And he drew a red circle. He said, "You got to go back to the setup here, so the punchline comes after the set." He said it was literally that level, and and he just worked. And he said it took ten years for him to build that. Hey, hey, you know that wild and crazy guy, and that was largely what the book was about. And then he said the four years of rock stardom he didn't really enjoy, you know. And I, I again, it reminded me of the sort of that sense of I got everything I want. I'm having trouble feeling it. Yes. But in a different way, because that's nothing. What you have is everything. But it's almost like James Taylor has this great line. It's much too much emotion to hold in your hand. It's like that's the a waves great, on out on the ocean. A great line. It's like trying to embrace the ocean. What you and Dara have, it's like trying to hold the ocean. It's too much. So you'll never feel it. Just swim, you know? And that's what he said about, you know, being a, this rock star. He's like, I got to get out of this because what I am is a quiet guy. And I want to write. He wanted to get to his other thing. And the most amazing thing to know was I, when I met him, uh, I was prepared to meet a legend, an idol, like a John Lennon to me. And uh, he had been in the room for 10 minutes before I noticed him. So he learned to turn on the Klieg lights that lit up Nassau Coliseum. We both talked. I saw that show I at Nassau him, Coliseum. I saw, him I saw the back row. And he comes and goes, this is for you people in the back row. It's called the dime trick. <laughs> and uh, I just thought that was genius. Uh, and he beca- he was that guy. And then I remember being heartbroken when he stopped. Uh, but now I have so much respect because he likes to sit there with his typewriter and he likes his art. And I can relate to that more. And when he, he walked into a restaurant, nobody looked up. He learned how to turn it off. It's remarkable. Yeah. And I heard like Steve Martin, uh, and, like they say he took a lot from Carl Valentine. Oh, I think we. That's yeah. hard to. That's like I I I. What did, did they say that about Bob Newhart taking from Shelley Berman? Yeah, maybe, well, Shelley but, Berman thought so. Well, what would Shelley? I mean, listen, I have very strong personal feelings about uh, the sanctity of a creation and having a conversation with somebody and coming to some agreement. I yeah. don't, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, I, I have very strong feelings about it. Uh, and at a great personal loss, stood up for myself against it. I, I really, I really do believe in the sanctity of somebody's creation is, is that that's sacred, but, um, it would have been something completely different. Yeah. You know, we were joking around last time because I am sort of like, be careful what you ask for if you want to be famous. I'm probably most famous for having turned down friends, right? Certainly oh, yes. in the industry. <laughs> but what would have been it's worse? Not on my cards. I wasn't going to bring it up. What would have been worse? No I, no, I go around barking it. <laughs> Listen, I just, you know, I, I, my first thought was, how do I make this Jack, my Jack Benny violin? I know I need something. I'm a leading man. It's going to be a little bit, I can't get up and just start talking about how hard life is. I need a thing. I got a thing. And I, it took me a while, but I found a way to use that. Very smart for uh, Kenny. Uh, yeah, you needed the. I needed the. I needed my bro. The yeah, you need your your violin. Uh, uh, I just don't think. The, first of all, there would have been room enough for both of them to make phone calls. I remember watching Shelley Berman do the phone call of the woman on the roof. Yeah, or, or some guy jumping off the roof, and never once thinking about Bob Newhart. Why did he stop? He didn't have to stop. Why did he stop? There's no trademark on that. Uh, and they were different. They were completely different yes, styles. Yes, and and yeah, one and 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 Shelley Berman was coming from a dangerous place, a dangerous uh, place, and and Bob Newhart was coming from middle of the road, you know, a tax accountant, funny guy, you know, uh, different styles entirely. Different. I don't know. That was the thing tones. I didn't understand was what was the problem? Why did he stop doing well, the Berman, phone calls? Berman was his own worst enemy in certain oh, ways. Yeah. He, 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 he had a self-destructive streak that, that hurt him, especially early in his career. That's too bad. Well, yeah. I know there was that special, right? That I that have you ever seen that the TV special? It was I, an incident of him sh of him yeah, sh shouting at like somebody. It. I've never it was seen like it. pre reality show. It was a reality show where they followed him around. A phone rings backstage. And yeah, and he got angry. Yes, yeah. and it, that followed him around. And but I heard too other people who've been on the podcast say they think it was more than that. Like it was just he himself. That I was think so, so too. I don't think it could come down to a moment like that. I think you know, you, I see it all the time. I I started in. Um, trying to remember in your mo your mother was talking about uh, when you were at the table about you get a video camera in here and suddenly he's he doesn't want to do what he's doing around you oh, know yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was the molecule of you yeah. with your family that was who you yes. were with them it was adorable uh it was really really something because who i otherwise i never would have seen that part and uh but he, like oh i forgot i'm 53 what what up with the fuck but i'm sure it was gonna be great I'll let it in later <laughs> And, and, you know, I'm getting the worst mental block Go now. Go ahead. I'll help you. And it's killing me. The actress we've had on the show who's been in all the Scorsese films. We had Ileana Douglas. Here. Ileana oh, Douglas. Yeah, yeah. But she's, well, a friend. she's got she's bigger a, eyes than I do. She's a yeah. friend Between of us, we got about 20 pound yeah. of eyeball. Well, that, you, you did that the Ikea show with her. Yes. Yeah, she's me. a doll. That was killing me. We love her. So You mean the Ikea show? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, the when Ileana Douglas was on, she said in her acting, she was always uh, trying to inhabit uh, Richard Dreyfus. That was like yes. the thought. Imagine that. That's interesting. And she, <laughs> she then told this to Richard Dreyfus, and he said, well, I was always trying to inhabit Spencer Tracy. Yes. I'm glad you remembered that. Yeah. That was insightful. See, I... Pay attention once. Or twice. I remember there was a. a Usually, I would have, yeah. take a nap. I would. I would. I would, I would have think so you would have. You would have liked to have inhabited Elaine Joyce. <laughs> yes. How do you mean inhabited? You know what I mean. Elaine Joyce. <laughs> of all the names from the pull out. Of <laughs> I'm right have, though. He could have said Juliet Prowse. <laughs> I, I had a friend. He went well, for Elaine Joyce. Oh my God. Well, God now Prowse. Juliet Prowse. South African. Yeah. Yeah, she is literally an African American, and legs oh, that go she was, yeah. up to the woman on the floor who lives above her. Yes, yes, <laughs> legs all day. Oh boy! Do you want to talk about in the time that we have left? Do you want to talk? First of all, I want you to tell Gilbert about sour grapes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know we, what? It was a funny thing that he did during sour grapes. And it was much funnier than anything in the movie. And I listen along. I am sorry. I'm sorry. I'll give you a what was it? Five bucks back then. 
I, I can't figure out why it was a misfire because every page of the script was laugh out loud yeah. funny. I don't know. I don't know what happened. It was miscooked. I don't know what it was. But the, but I think the, it was the cast. It may have been. I, I may have been miscast. <laughs> it's happened before. Oh, wait. Here I wanted to bring up to he you. Sat just the, before he sat down across from me, and it was the first day he sat across from me. He goes, well. And I went, oh, I'm getting fired. Because yeah. uh, we did struggle with the scene a little bit. Yeah. And uh, he goes, well, I have decided to start. Eating with my mouth closed. <laughs> I'm 50. Uh, but you and Weber got a, a lifelong friendship. Out I, of love, it. So I love, I love Steve. Good like things came of it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It, it's like when when you were talking about uh, Alan Alda talking about the early um, guys and dolls, guys and dolls, uh, and how it was like Yiddish theater with right. them screaming out yes. the lines and. Every, so how how did what is your opinion knowing that and to the movie version? Well, I think a lot of it was uh, that you talk. Um, why didn't uh, wouldn't you have loved to have seen Dean Martin? Yes, play Sky. Oh, yeah, he was yeah. born to play him. Yeah, yeah. And uh, 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 what happened there? Who was who was who was Joe, Joe Mankiewicz? Made yeah. That. But, I don't but know. Maybe well, I think Frank, wrong. it was a lot of it. And and also, uh, but but why did you pick a guy? Why would you? It's like picking, um, you know, I want a guy, Benicio Del Toro. Oh, yeah. yes. Well, it feels like a studio. I mean, what do you do? It, like, fe- well, like, it feels like a studio decision. Like it was a marketing decision. Hey, Brando's Yeah, hot. they don't know. He'll play they, Sky I Masterson. I think there are people who think only in terms of, you know, uh, you know, graphs. And they're not seeing what, what's going to work. The other or, problem is that the guy that owned the part on Broad- Broadway and and did the shit out of it was probably considered unbankable as a as a movie actor. That, Robert that happened all the time. So you got that problem. My niece, who's very very has preternaturally uh, uh, smart at, at four years old, said, "Craig, why, why, Uncle Craig, why, why aren't you playing uh, 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 Harold Hill in the movie?" And uh, I said, I, "I really don't know." And my mommy says that it's because you're not famous enough. And I said, "Well, it, that's probably true." Then why did you say you didn't know? <laughs> I was like, like, listen, you're four. That's yeah. That, that that's gonna wear off in a while. Yeah. You're gonna end up without teeth. And I'm your uncle. All right. <laughs> I love you, Matthew. I love Matthew Broderick to death, but he did not have. I never saw it, and oh. I told him. I I said I can't watch. It. I can't go back to that play unless I bring my kid, or it, it's just too. I just it, I just think he lacked your presence. In well, the, I'm in, a big in, man in the part, and also uh, you had the the uh, you know the unenviable task of following. I'll Preston. also say Preston. I'll also say that I think uh, I never now I never saw it, but uh, a lot of it I a lot of it comes down to the, the director, and they had a director who I did work with mm-hmm. on Boston Legal. He did a great job of directing Boston Legal, but I never would have looked at this guy and said, "Let's get him in River City," because. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, it wasn't, it's a musical. But tell the Carol Burnett story to Gilbert while we're talking about it, because it's worth We worth had telling. just made very violent love, and when we made love, it was <laughs> always, it was, and, to, and, she, and, she said, take me to the edge, and I said, what do you mean the edge? Because I'm working with cutlery. And she said, you know what I'm, I want to feel, I want to look at death right down the, uh, No. Or and the other, the other. You mean the other, the, yeah, the charming other backstage no, story? Now, is it true that when, <laughs> what, what when right, she, right? Do I have to say when that? she came? Did she pull on our ear? Stop that! Yes. that's not right. Now that's not appropriate. <laughs> that's not appropriate. I used to say I, 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 I dreamt that I, I, I was, I was fucking my cat, <laughs> and I, I. I, he, the cat turns around and says something to me that's so inappropriate. I'm not going to repeat it. <laughs> uh, and but, now, but no, when you are, were fucking Carol Burnett. Oh no, no, stop it! Come on. Did you ever come so hard that she afterwards came out with a mop? <laughs> I don't know. You know what? You know why? Because I was hovering. I, I was like a hovercraft well, of ejaculate up and down for that. half an hour. It's like, look at this. Here, go by the window. Look at this. <laughs> He's got six minutes of new material from the Carol Burnett, from the Carol Burnett bit. <laughs> I love Carol Burnett. It's a sweet story. Hopefully yeah, he'll be quiet yeah, long yeah, enough yeah, for our we, listeners I think we've, to hear. We've, we've, we've pretty much made it into the Manson murders now. Did Charlie Callis passed that one. Uh, uh, 
uh, oh, it was. It's a touching story. He won't appreciate it. Yeah. It's monk, but our you listeners will. Yes, he will. <laughs> he has a heart. You saw uh, the doc. My uh, this. I had mentioned earlier the girl I did that that film with, uh, Sally Murphy, who is an excellent actress. Well, we we hadn't seen each other for a number of years. And this is that one of those weird things that happens in life. I get cast in The Music Man, and she's doing a play called The Wild Party right across the street. We had seen each other for close to 10 years. We had, were boyfriend and girlfriend. And uh, all of us, and we become friends again. And there we are at the Tony Awards, both standing on the edge of the stage, watching whatever, both about to go on for our respective shows. And we looked at each other, and we're like, how about this shit? But it was also... Too big to feel. Oh, yes. Because, A, you've yes. got a performance coming on, but it was like, I even now I look back and go, God, what if, if we had known that, you know, but uh, uh, Carol but uh, Carol Burnett came up to me and I said, could this moment be any weirder? And I feel a tap on my shoulder. I turn around and it's my sex partner, Carol Burnett. And, uh, and, Carol, <laughs> and Carol Burnett says, uh, I saw your show and I loved it. And I think you, and, and I know Robert Preston, he was the greatest man. You would have loved him and he would have loved you. And I think you're sharing a soul right now. And I did say, you know, it's a, it's crazy to, you know, you say these things in public because they're private little moments, but when you're scared and it's a new experience, I just said, if you're up there and you want to take a ride anytime, download yourself. And I like to think, you know, he did. That's nice. You know? That is nice. Uh, and it was it was such a gener and I remember her saying that and uh she has got to be the warmest human being and it was such she took my hand and she's about to go do the Tonys too, you know? It's scary that you know and uh and for her to come over and take the time to say that to somebody that she doesn't know. I just thought it was an incredibly generous That's thing. That's very sweet. Those people make up for the people like Gilbert. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, the C words it, you meet. You know what I remember? <laughs> I've told this because I tell. I just I've told stories. There's there, there's <laughs> there's there are episodes where I would love. I there's got to be a story that you've told every single episode. Yes. Got, which which story would it be? Caesar Romero and the, and the, and the no, that stopped after a while. It waned. Yeah. But I remember a moment <laughs> like that where you go, "Wow, I I was on a show and and I did." some bit i did some just some shtick improvise and afterwards i feel a big hand on my shoulder and it's vincent price oh my god and he goes i loved your peter laurie <laughs> that's wonderful and i thought wow that is wonderful this i was... wish your story came before mine <laughs> yes i would have had a chance <laughs> wouldn't that have been they're both you good. cut it no, there was. That's an amazing thing. Yeah. I know what he means to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, th those are those moments are, are few and far. Hey, between, it's why but, we do this. Yeah, you look like a man who is so packed up and ready to go home to his wife. No, no. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm looking at the people out there. Let's. Uh, okay. Now what's let's get Frank Federosa? You Sam haven't chimed in. Will you chime in? I, Frank Federosa, ch chime in. I haven't. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Well, just chime in. What, what do you think? How's the show going so far? Have you listened to any of it? When you guys let me know when to record. Uh, I'll roll it. <laughs> what you want to do? Wasn't Sam Levine and Guys and Dolls? Yes, yes, he was. Yes, yeah. yes. yes. In I fact, believe he, he was, was the original Nathan. Yeah, he was the original Nathan. You know, he had five songs. You know how much he ended up with nothing. Oh, because geez. he couldn't sing. <laughs> and so the Out of Town. There's a book about it, and he's he'd go. He go. Why are you cutting another song of mine? And they said, Sam, because you can't sing. He said, What do you get? play the song? He goes, Hit a G, and they go, Ding, and he go, <laughs> And he goes, That's why it's cut. He goes, What are you talking about? That's crazy. What are you talking about? But they loved him so much. Yes, that he was Nathan. That they actually. His acting drove away the the songs. There was a yes. song that he and Sky sang called Travel Light. It's out there if you want to hear it, and you can't imagine the show. It's not. It. It doesn't. You know. Do you guys want to attempt something together? As yeah, you suggested, get your, as get, you your, su get your pants off. You let's just go. Let's just see what happens. on the phone. <laughs> no, I don't want to try. I'll, I'll do whatever you want to do. I'll All follow. Right. You. You start, and I'll come in. All right. Here, this may be a disaster, but it's, we can always cut it out. Well, with your kind of belief in us, I don't see how it would go wrong. <laughs> All right, Jesus, Frankie. Who says something like that. What song are we going to do? Or we're going to try uh, this one. Okay, what do we got, Frankie? 
Oh, he's setting up the tripod to shoot, to shoot you guys doing this. That's how confident uh, we he is. don't want that. And, yeah, no, we and, gotta, I think this would be a good promo and, when it's time. He's in put in this fact, on Facebook there, Live. there was a part in in the documentary where I'm gonna sing with Dick Van Dyke. Oh, oh, and he says to me in the beginning, very seriously, he goes, "Well, the beginning is like a D. Uh, just, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gave up quickly." <laughs> All right. Uh, I like your confidence, Frankie. <laughs> well, this is, this is a, I might bail on this one. You see your parts, CB and GG? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. They call you Lady Luck, but there is room for doubt. At times you have a very unladylike way of running out. You're on this date with me. The pickings have been lush, level. And yet before this evening is over, you might give me the brush. You might forget your manners You might refuse to stay And so the best that I can do is pray Oh, disco! I don't know the 
this part? With rawhide. Rawhide. Roll them, roll them. Go down. Don't bomb. Go down. China. So let's keep this party to polite. <laughs> let's keep Belay. the party polite. Party's coming. <laughs> hey, uh, luck be a lady. You ready? Luck be a lady. My dressing room. Oh, straight from the bar, ladies and gentlemen. Gilbert Godfrey, don't tell your mother. How did all these people get in my dressing room? <laughs> oh, God. We, there are some ruined burial Texas. Some nicely pressed burial tuxes are ruined. Oh. <laughs> you. I think luck ran out. <laughs> luck is running up 6th Avenue by the Bronx about right about 40, now. 40, 40 seconds in. <laughs> oh, you, you, my friend. Uh, you had faith. <laughs> I know. You had faith. Well, it's the death of me every time. Tell us, as we, as we wrap it up, tell us about Unreal. Oh, Unreal. I love this show. Uh, I'm very proud to be a part of it. It's uh, it's great. It's, it's, it's very, um, it couldn't come at a more interesting time. In history, actually, especially during the Me Too movement, uh, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's it, Lifetime wanted to rebrand itself, which is always a, a loaded effort. You never know what that's you know what's going to happen. It can go AMC and you get something like Mad Men, or uh, they can rebrand themselves and nothing happens. But it just so happens they wanted to do uh, an edgy show that was created by uh, uh, um, uh, Sarah Gertrude Shapiro and. Marty Knox and, and, and they hit it out of the park as far as it's, it's a women, it's a show about women who don't, who weigh more and are older than 28. There's like an entire demographic of women and it's, uh, and, uh, and I have a fantastic part. I play a, 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 play a drug addicted <laughs> producer of a reality <laughs> show, but it's a, it's a, a very dark, uh, it's, uh, it, it's got a real heart and soul to it. And, um, yeah. yeah. And you're getting great notices for it, my friend. So oh, that's con- nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Notice the press. You're you're getting a nice piece of press. What do they used to call it? Not notices. What do they used to call like a buzz? (laughs) Oh, no. Notices. They would I just want I just want to say you're gonna make a beautiful dollar in this business. That's what I that's that's the one yes, I that's yes. the one I like. I wanna be a part of your television show. I wanna be your Tony Randall showing up with the blue blazer when Alec Baldwin doesn't show up. You can it can I be think, arranged. I think this is your year. <laughs> yeah. You might have to fight kind, Rich, Richard, for the uh... uh I have footage I'll send you of us. We did we improvised something together that it did never happened, but it, we we were two owners of a hedge fund. And we just improvised, and it's four minutes of us uh, just going nuts. I have to send it to you because he's so fucking funny. He's one of the funniest people. I did see him live. It's I, you know, I make fun of him a lot, but there's he is. There's no Don Knotts or there's no one who does it. The, the, well, there's you. you. You're the last of a dying breed. People who do something that nobody else can do. That's it. It's imitated, uh, and then you know you see that they can do other stuff. I've seen Richard do beautiful. Very quiet, you know, subtle <laughs> drama, but but no, nope. this New Yorker cartoon he's become, you know, <laughs> his work is, uh, is is it's it's a creation. Uh, he's conscious of it. He's fully in control, and and he's a master at it. The 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 Coen Brothers picture, the, oh. the 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 beauty of the performance in the Pixar movie and Inside Out. He yeah. really deserves a lot of credit for his and range. his television work. You know, it, a lot of yeah. his stuff on Mad About You. It's just uh, his timing is. The, and and he's, he's impeccable. Been great to this show, so we really we have to thank him. I want to give. I have a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Maury Riskind Rabinowitz. He's been dead for fifteen Maury years, but he's Riskind. so funny. Maury Riskind. His brother's a rabbi. <laughs> Before you get out of here, tell us about uh, your this charity that you work with, Loma, oh, Loma God. Linda. Yeah, you know, uh, I was uh, one of my, I guess I was 45 years old and I realized, uh, I know, um, this business of getting up in front of people, it's it seems silly to me. So I went to a children's hospital uh, I could uh, that my cousin had been inviting me to for uh, 
years and I couldn't get out of it anymore. I had no more excuses. Uh, and my, and my show that I was doing, which was called unhitched, uh, we called it unwatched, uh, got, the one with got, you and Rashida Jones. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We, we had just gotten canceled, but I promised I'll come out. I'll shake some hands up, you know, whatever. But I felt like such a loser. My show had just been canceled. I did. And I really didn't know. I'm literally driving through a desert going, I got it with the metaphors. I got it. I'm driving through the desert not knowing what I, that I want to do this anymore. Literally. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, I don't need to stand in front of people. And plus nothing works. Nothing yeah. seems to work. Yep. So uh, I was having one of those days, you could say, and I went to this hospital and the woman said, have you ever been to a children's hospital before? I said, well, the once, and then I had tonsils, you know, but other than that, I was being cute. She said, okay, well, I just, you know, just so you know, it's, it can be emotional. I was like, I got it. I got it. You know, I walked in and uh, I lost it. I had never seen a preemie baby before. Uh, I'd never seen, uh, and the, the kids with cancer who are watching television and laughing and playing. Uh, I've been told that there was uh, a baby just recently who'd passed away who um, a nurse was carrying during a night shift. And another nurse said, why don't you put the baby down while you're doing the paperwork? Said, we know that this baby isn't going to make it through the week. So all the nurses decided that its feet will never touch the ground. And the baby's feet never touched the ground. And they, you know, they did beautiful things like this. I left there, uh, and the stories go on and on. And I left there. Uh, it's the Loma Linda Children's Hospital. Um, I will give you information that you can insert later because I, do. I don't have. Uh, Please, I'm sorry. If you want to make a donation, yeah, uh, a you can't cost. do it over the phone anymore. That's what Boo and I used to make uh, right. films, and we still do it. But you, they don't have a call-in number anymore. But uh, but you can make a donation. And what what they've done is they, they they're an incre they're incredible. They were so thankful to me, and I said, "Listen, I, I just got canceled. The version of what you do is the patient died. Yeah, you know." And they're like, "It didn't hit them that." It, the fact that anybody took the time to come and help. Uh, and I realized, well, I, I don't know what I can do. It's too early for too late for med school, but I can pimp the shit out of my friends. And I put on uh, every once in a while, we'll put on a, a, a benefit and make money. And it, I thought if I can do this stuff that's nice. And enjoy myself and feel like I'm contributing something to these people who are amazing. I feel good. Yeah. And I, I got to pick people I got to appear with. So I met Mickey Dolans. I just said, he'll be in the show. <laughs> and he showed up. That's fantastic. And he couldn't have been nicer. He's... Martin Short showed up. Ryan Reynolds Will showed you put up. Gilbert on the next one? If you want to come, it's uh, it's it's one of the most special evenings. Only and they would if love I you. can sing. <laughs> yes. We'd, they would we'd love, love it. We'd love to be there. Yeah. It's they a great charity. It. You've done great things for Thank them. Thank you so I, much I for mentioning it. Mention it. Okay. Thank you for mentioning it. The Loma Linda Children's House. Yeah. Well, we'll Thank put you. the information on the website and on uh, Facebook and on Twitter. Gil, you want to let this man go home? <laughs> okay. This has been Gilbert <laughs> Gottfried's amazing colossal podcast with my co host, Frank Santo Padre. And we've been talking to. Craigman Vivalzaiden, Abiera Seidel Fiva. I shortened. I shortened it for show business. <laughs> <laughs> My friend, thank you. Thank you. So much. <laughs> I love you. Guys. I love you. <laughs> right, shut up, Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs>